So the Galaxy S20 Ultra is a device we were excited to see. The announcements uh, gave us a lot of hope, excitement, but it kind of fizzled down afterwards, right? So let's see if it's still worth it after three months. Samsung's most expensive Galaxy S device, the Ultra, has been out for about three months plus thereabouts. Uh, the hype when it came out was great. Um, I did a couple of videos, which you guys can go ahead and check out. But I want to talk about using it, you know, in that three month period. Uh, so one thing I'll let you guys know is that I traditionally would move from an S device to a Note and from a Note to an S. And this was the first time I didn't necessarily do that. And there were a couple of things that caused that to happen. Uh, now, starting off with some of the things I do like and I like using on this device, uh, which is something that isn't necessarily a direct feature, but it's the fact that the battery life is great. 5,000 milliamp battery, which adds weight to the device when you carry it, but for me it's fine, but some people that might find it heavy, uh, does a fantastic job. It's really good, battery life is great. Now you see some battery tests where it doesn't win the battery test. In my use case scenario, it just lasts long. That's all it does, so I, li I like that fact. Uh, but that's coupled with, of course, the fact that you have a display that is 120 hertz refresh rate. Uh, and that display is gorgeous. It's a beautiful looking display. And with that kind of refresh rate, you're only doing it at 1080p. It's a bit bummed about it at first, but after using other devices that had 120 hertz of 2K, and watching how quickly the battery drained, especially if I was gaming, I kind of like the fact that this lasts long. So I do appreciate it, but Samsung displays always look good. And honestly, most people can't tell the difference. So that part is great. So when you're gaming uh, on this device, you get a very smooth experience, fast, responsive. You can check out my full gaming video on that. I did a gaming review, I did a gaming first look. Uh, and it's a solid device to game. Speakers are loud and clear. Uh, now, although it's not, I still prefer the Note 10 speaker over the Galaxy S20 Ultra. I think there were some tweaks to the speakers that I just didn't like, but it still sounds good. It still sounds good. We've got a speaker test, a couple of those you guys can go check out. Links will be down below, at least you can check out the cards and stuff. So what's the day-to-day -day with a device like this? Now it's been a bit harder to showcase it because I've been at home, like you guys, but using it as a power user, Battery life is one of the first things you notice that works out pretty well. The display is great, speakers are fine, um, and we move around to the main thing that catches most people's attention. It's the camera. It's got a massive camera hump, right? And you're going, okay, I've got a big camera hump. What am I doing with that camera? Periscopic zoom, giving you more functionality. You're going, okay, that's great, that's nice. But it has, of course, some, some issues with that in the sense that Samsung advertised it as 100x zoom. When you go past 30x zoom, 50 is okay, manageable, I would say. But anything after 30x zoom is not worth sharing on social media or friends to anyone. That's the thing. I wish they just called it a space zoom and it was done. But I do like the fact that they have that there and the quality, image quality has been really good, especially in low light conditions. 10x zoom, 5x zoom in low light. Love it. Absolutely love it. Now the camera does well in low light and the camera does well in those kind of conditions quite clearly. It looks crisp, it's sharp, it's vibrant. I like the image quality I'm getting there. Now when it comes to uh, the front facing camera, it also does a really solid job. You've got a bigger sensor there in the front, it captures really well. One of the things a lot of people will, will mention is the camera can be a little bit contrasted, which is great for me. When I take pictures of myself or anyone who's like me, who's darker skinned, who's black, it comes out really well. I like the image quality it produces. Now I've noticed from some of my friends, uh, other YouTubers who are, you know, different skin shades and colors, eh, maybe not so much from what they've shown. So for me, I like that. What I don't like and what Samsung is having a hard time fixing is the autofocus. Now, Samsung cameras are known to have that dual, uh, dual pixel autofocus, which is just super fast, it's sharp, it's vibrant, I mean, it's just great. With this device, uh, initially uh, when it launched, focusing was an issue, especially at nighttime. Ooh, it just was trying to find things left and right. It's gotten better. They've actually gone ahead and tried to fix that. And you can see it does a much better job trying to focus on an image or an object when you're using it. But it's not as fast as it should be. And it's taking some time. I think one of the things that I didn't like was Samsung wasn't clear on updates. 
Uh, we didn't hear officially that, hey, hey, look, something's coming up. You know, we heard like OnePlus and other companies mention that. Samsung, which traditionally you would say, hey, there's something coming, just didn't. And that part for me was a bit disconcerting. But I'm glad to see those updates and coming and hopefully it fixes that. Now, a lot of people don't like that because this device is called an Ultra. When you have an Ultra device, it should be here above everyone else. And when you compare the cameras, and you can check out my camera comparisons, it's a closer race than that. And when you look at other features, it's still a closer race. So is it worth getting an Ultra? And we'll answer that question when we get to the end of this video. Now, when it comes to other things like the Ultra uh, Sonic fingerprint sensor, it's so much improved. It really is good. It's solid. It may not be as fast, you know, as the you know traditional uh, laser fingerprint sensor, but it's really nice and it's solid. I just wanted to mention that because that's something the S10 required a bunch of updates to get better. Um, the Note 10 got better than 10, and 10 Plus was much better with that. And I think this has finally nailed that well. Uh, I think overall, if you're using this device on a day-to-day -day basis, you are a power user. You're using the phone. You're using you know, some work functionality, you're gaming on here, you're watching video content, you will enjoy the phone thoroughly. It's got enough juice, 865 processor, 12 gigs of RAM, enough storage, 120 expandable, all that fun jazz to give you what you want. If you're using it for the camera, you will still get great quality of the camera, uh, but you will find a few things that you might not fully like. And I think that's where it robbed people the wrong way. So for me, after three months, where do I put the Galaxy S20 Ultra? Is it still worth picking up? And I'll say, mm, not so much. It's a great device. I like it. It works well for me. I can't fully justify it because there's certain things that just don't hit. And I wish it did. And hopefully it still can because the updates have gotten it closer to where it wants to be. One of the updates that actually came through was the fact that now with the 45 watt charger, it's now down to like 51 minutes charging. For 5,000 milliamp battery, that's pretty good. Uh, Danny Winget sh showcased it off in his video, so you can definitely check it out in his uh, new charging video. But that's, those are the things I would like to see improved, especially when we get to the Galaxy Note 20 uh, compared to the uh, S20 Ultra here. Uh, but the other Samsung devices that do a fantastic job, and if you're looking for that Samsung ecosystem flavor, then the S20 Plus is that device that really hits the nail on the head. And if you guys want to see a video three months after with the S20 Plus, let me know. I will try and do that for you. But overall, the S20 Ultra, you know what? Good effort, Samsung. You tried to show us something different, a little bit innovative. I say don't stop there. Continue to show us new things and push the boundaries as much as you can in, a, in the square rectangle uh, space. Otherwise, guys, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Hopefully, everyone's at home safe and well, and always enjoy your entertainment.